en la perdición. All right, let's pause the music. Don't want any copyright violations. Okay, I'm going to start with the uh, tweeters up on the dash. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. One thing, this is for 2007, I believe through 2011, uh, Nissan Sentras. Just so you know, for this A-pillar cover right here, you got to take off the panel here on the side. Pretty straightforward. It's got uh, four little pop-in tabs, okay? It sits like this, pop it off. You need to pop that off first so you can get the A-pillar cover off. The A-pillar cover is held on with two uh, locking tabs, and then you've got to rotate it in and pull it up, all right? And you can see it's got tabs down there on the bottom, all right? Don't try to pry it back. It's best if you move it over towards the inside of the vehicle, and then it comes right off. You need to get this cover off so that you can get the tweeter cover off. The tweeter cover can be popped out relatively easy with a, uh, there you go, with one of the uh, body panel removal tools. It's pretty straightforward. I will tell you that I did pop it off earlier without taking off the A-pillar and it gets stuck here in the corner. Ah, well, and then this tells us exactly why. This little section right here, this tab right here is held in place by the A-pillar cover. So you've got to take the A-pillar cover off to get the tweeter, the tweeter grill off. And from there, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Looks like it's got two uh, Phillips head screws and uh, should pop right out. To get at these, uh, these little mounting screws, maybe that one towards the front might be a little more difficult. It's hard to see, but as you can see, the, the window starts coming down and it's hard to get your hand in there. Just over the years, I, I don't know how long I've had these, but I've got a couple of little L-shaped screwdrivers. And I've also got like a, well, maybe not 90 degree, but maybe 60, 75 degree maybe, bit holder to get in there and get those, uh, to get those little screws out. You know, you just attach a little bit up there. And if you want to do it slower, I mean, you can do it with these little L-shaped, low-profile uh, screwdrivers. Uh, just a couple little tips to take note when you're going to get those tweeters out of there. I actually got this uh, A-pillar off to put in the mic, the mic cord for the stereo for the head unit. I'm going to run the mic uh, and, and uh, clip it up here on top of the A-pillar cover. Run it around under the dash, and it'll come right back out and connect it to the back of the uh, the back of the uh, head unit. Okay, not sure if you can see the microphone. There it is. I've got the mic hidden there uh, inside the headliner. It's actually clipped inside the headliner. I went ahead and just uh, ran the wire behind this mount here. So, make sure the wire wouldn't fall back out. I had to remove this plate just to give the headliner a little bit of play. And then, well, here we go. And then just strapped it down, coming down and run it into the dash. Uh, underneath, just a quick uh, note, a little tip. If you get one of these grabbing, grasping tools, you can uh, feed it through the dash and uh, make it a little quicker to pull stuff out there. That's where it's going to go into the back of the uh, stereo and into the back of the head unit. So uh, it's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Okay, making a little progress. Got uh, the head unit all buttoned up. Everything works. Tested out the uh, microphone there. Made a couple calls, everything's good. Got that all buttoned back up. Uh, moving over to the tweeters now. Up in the uh, driver's side uh, dash, that was a pain in the bootay. Uh, here's the tweeter. Yeah, it's seen better days. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and cut off the uh, factory connector. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and reuse this on the aftermarket units. 
So I can use the, uh, the OEM harness when I plug back in. Just going to test to make sure that the tweeters and the uh, mid-ranges, or rather the, uh, the six and a halfs in the doors are wired in parallel. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check the, uh, they should both be on the same positive wire. And so I'm gonna check to see if it's the same color. And if it is, I'll be okay and we can keep going. Uh, started with the uh, door panels, pretty straightforward. You've got a little panel to pop out here. You've got a, a screw in here. You've got uh, one that holds the uh, panel down there. And again, you gotta pop out that little coin tray holder here. And you have to pop off the uh, There you go. You have to pop off this assembly. It pops straight up. Pop it straight up. Once you disconnect the uh, harnesses, you've got one last bolt. That's a 10 millimeter in there. The rest of these are Phillips. You've got a Phillips there. You've got a Phillips in there. And then you've got a 10 millimeter right here. The, uh, the window switch, the power window switch assembly, it just pops right off. Okay? There's nothing to these harnesses. They just come straight off. The uh, the door panel then pops off. There are no bolts holding it around the edges. It pops off, and you lift up like so, and it'll come off. I almost forgot. You need to pop off that little uh, this little door trim here in the corner, and it pops straight out. Okay, the door's open. So when you look at it this way, it's gonna pop straight out that way. It's got two little clips on there, and then the uh, the rest of the door panel can just pop straight up. Okay, and we've got a major obstacle. By the way, uh, the uh, door handle and locking mechanism is uh, held onto the back of the uh, door panel with four uh, little screws. You can see them there. They're all uh, Phillips head. And this is why you should do your research and double and triple check things. Turns out these are not six and a halfs in the door they are six by nines so what I'm going to do is put the uh, Rockford Fosgate six by nines that I have I'm gonna go ahead and, and put those in the door and return the six and a half that I have and uh, get another set of six by nines this is why hmm well anyway Types of uh, problems like this that you encounter, not much you can do about it. This is going to put a major dent in the project. But what I can do, nonetheless, is get the tweeter in, get the 6x9s in both sides, and then uh, I'll have to order another set of 6x9s for the rear deck. So this is pretty straightforward. It's got a, uh, a mounting bracket here, and it's got the four, four uh, screws holding the speaker into the bracket. Okay, another problem. For some reason, I can't even get this low-profile screwdriver in there. It's already butting up against the uh, glass. And I don't want to break it any more than... Or crack it any more than it already is. So, what I'm doing, again, improvise. I'm getting a long pair of uh, needle-nose pliers. And just turning it by hand. Quarter turn at a time. But it's working. It's coming out. So just be advised. Uh, it's a pretty tight squeeze up there. I'm going to have to uh, customize uh, a bracket. What I'm doing, as you can see, uh, the tweeter uh, has got a, a pin, a dowel pin there, and two screws. I already took the one out that's here. I already took that one out. I'm working on this one now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that speaker out of there and just use that, this bracket on the outside and glue or epoxy the tweeter because it's a little bit smaller. But I'm going to epoxy the tweeter inside of it and then use that, uh, the same bracket here so that I can screw it down. So uh, it's slow going, but it's going. And holy cow, one quick note gonna go ahead and uh, take this tweeter
this tweeter which also has seen better days yeah anyway what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take this uh, harness off and use it I'm gonna solder it to the uh, the new uh, aftermarket tweeter that I bought and but this is what I'm talking about this bracket I'm gonna cut these braces right here cut them all file it down a little bit and uh, the tweeter will fit in there just about perfectly enough to at least epoxy it down on the corners anyway mm -hmm. what I wanted to bring up was man that this connector right here is pretty much retracting into the dash so uh, I got my little screwdriver man I almost lost it but luckily I barely held on to it and uh, was able to pull it out enough to feed this little screwdriver through it just to keep it from going back into the into the dash because man I don't know what it would take to get down in there anyway pretty late I'm going to uh, cut this so I can take it home and epoxy the uh, the tweeter down and uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow but uh, now that I know uh, that I've got a 6x9 here in the door won't be any problem uh, swapping it out and uh, I can take back those uh, six and a half that I have and uh, swap them out on the back all right and that's what the finished product looks like sitting there uh, you can see that bracket fits like a glove and uh, I could not I could not uh, screw the uh, tweeters down that's why I glued them with epoxy I couldn't screw them down because there's a ring where, where the other tweeter was it, it, there's not enough material there to grab on on any side but uh, it's already uh, seated there and uh, I'm gonna put a screw here a screw here in the back which is gonna be fun I'm sure especially now this tweeter is a little bit higher profile but uh, should still fit uh, under the grill there it is with the uh, grill back on, man. Fits like a glove. All right, guys, we're going to continue with the uh, installation of the rear speakers. First thing you need to do is uh, remove all the plastic body trim panels from the top, or I'm sorry, from the bottom up to the top over here uh, behind this C pillar right here. Um, let's see if we can get some light in here. All right, the first thing you're going to need to do, this is again a 2008 Sentra. And uh, this model vehicle, all you got to do is pull up on the rear seat. It pops up just like that. That'll be enough clearance to get the uh, floor panel out or the door uh, threshold panel. And as you can see, it's got a lip in there. So you do need to pop this seat out. You do not need to remove the whole seat. I've seen that in a few videos. You, you know. Knock yourself out if that's what you want to do. You don't have to. Uh, this panel comes off. Take note. Uh, this, this panel's just got uh, those little pop rivets. Those battle, uh, body panel fasteners in there. All right. Next comes the uh, side panel here. I've already got it off. All right, just so you guys can see. This actually has a, uh, a hook on the bottom, okay? And it's held in place with these loops. The uh, door seal actually holds it in place there. And it's got the uh, two popping, or three popping fasteners up on top. So this one you need to pop it out from the top, okay? Be careful that on the bottom because you can break that loop down under that hook. So for the side panel, it pops off from the top. You need to rock the seat forward. Again, in this 2008 model, you can rock this forward and it opens up to the trunk. And these little uh, clips right here just snaps right off. I highly recommend getting yourself a uh, body panel and trim removal kit. Comes with, uh, you know, a lot of us have these hard metal 
uh, panel removers, but this will protect not only the uh, body trim panels, but uh, the paint, you know, you're removing uh, the panels around doors or whatnot. So anyway, moving on to the uh, panel up here by the head, by the uh, C pillar. This is what it looks like on the inside. This is what it looks like from the uh, where all the fasteners are located. Take note where it sits up on the rear deck. It's got two uh, hooks there, so do not pry it from the bottom. Pry it from the top. Okay. It, it'll pop off like so. And just scoot it over a little bit. Shift it back, and it comes right off. All right. So that's what the uh, driver's side looks like. The uh, passenger side is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the uh, passenger side and uh, continue once I'm able to pull that rear panel. Uh, on the rear deck, take note, I've already taken out uh, four of the uh, panel uh, fasteners. And again, just got that body trim removal kit and they pop right off. All right, here's one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, you have to pull off the rear uh, third brake light. It's real easy to do when it's mounted inside. You just push, push on this back portion right here. It'll unlock these two tabs. You kind of push and pry up a little bit. As you can see, it uh, clips into the rear there. So don't try to pull it up without uh, unlocking these uh, the front tabs. It's going to sit in the vehicle like this. This is what it looks like behind all these water spots. I just washed off the engine, so. Uh, but as you can see, uh, this is all part of the panel, so. Okay, guys, I'm trying to do this one-handed and hold the camera and look through the viewfinder or at the screen with the other, so bear with me. But uh, this is the rear trunk, uh, uh, the rear trunk. This is the trunk compartment. There are the uh, speakers that we'll be uh, swapping out today. And you can see the uh, the fasteners up here. What I did, just a standard pair of pliers, just grab the, there you go, and turn it sideways so you can see how it actually uh, snaps in there. Just with the pair of pliers, just grab it, pinch it a little bit, and it pops right up just like that. You don't want to get in there with anything, you know, any long metal objects or anything like that just to try to to get the, uh, the rear portion, uh, the rear deck to pop off. But as you can see, it's it's pretty loose there. I think there's one more fastener that needs to come out. Nope, there it is. Comes off pretty easily once you get all the fasteners up. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I obviously need to lift it up a little bit more and slide it forward. All right, put the pliers down. I gotta stop this zooming in and out, but I'm trying to hold the, the camera. Okay, this is the rear portion. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty loose. These, uh, there it is. These seat belt covers that just pop right off. But um, I guess the purpose it would serve is just to be able to grab onto the inside and pull forward because there's no, there's no fasteners or anything you can access from here. So as you can see there, the whole thing's loose. Make sure you clear that uh, the uh, rear uh, third brake light harness. Make sure you send it back through this hole up here. Now you can just grab it like this, and it, well, this one came down, that side, there it goes, there it is, and now we have access to the uh, rear speakers on both sides, these appear to be 25 Torx, uh, 25 Torx, uh, there's plenty of clearance here. To get a standard, you know, or, a, or maybe a low profile screwdriver in here to get these uh, swapped out. So we'll uh, swap those out. Uh, gonna have to, uh, to uh, modify the wiring so that uh, fabricate a little uh, connection so that it'll connect to the stock uh, wiring harness. Alright, guys, just to uh, let everybody know, uh, in a 2008 Sentra, anyway, 
I think most models from 07 to 11 should be the same. But the uh, for the wiring on the left hand, again, this is looking at the rear deck here. On the left hand uh, speaker wiring, it's going to be the green wire. I don't think I can get it focused in there, but it's going to be the green wire with the yellow stripe is positive. Okay? So I've got it with a red connector. All right. On the passenger side, don't get mixed up, all right? The blue wire, it's marked with an L on uh, the wiring diagram. I'm not sure uh, what, what color they're referencing there, but R is red, you know. L, I don't know if lilac is a shade of blue or what, but nevertheless, uh, the blue wire is going to be your positive, okay? Just keep that in mind. This is the rear passenger side. Blue wire is positive. And on the driver side, the green wire with the yellow stripe is positive. All right, guys. Uh, I've got the rear uh, deck panel back in place. Uh, the brake light snaps right back in there. Um, I've already put the fasteners, the four fasteners up here on top, but I just wanted to point out, as I mentioned before, that uh, that C-pillar cover, it's got those two hooks, oh, that's probably a better angle right there, it's got those two hooks, and there it goes, what you can see right in here, one of them hooks right there, the other one hooks up there. So once you slide it right in place, uh, it lines up. I already put it back on and took it off again. But the other uh, clips, little uh, uh, the body clips will snap right in there. So all right, so we got everything uh, buttoned up. We got uh, you can see here, it's got a, a pretty stock look to it. You know, this is a. Uh, uh, for a college student, you know, don't need anything uh, screaming Rockford Fosgate punch here in the back. Somebody passes by, I know we're going to have this window tinted, but uh, right now somebody passes by, we got a real stock look to it. Uh, the uh, stereo up front is pretty low profile, and all these stock locations were used for the, uh, the 6x9s in the door and the tweeters on the dash. So. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is that I had to adjust and kind of uh, modify the little self-locking clips that help lock in the 6x9 speakers. I had to open them up a little bit more because uh, the way that rear deck metal was punched, it was uh, pretty thick, actually, and the, uh, the uh, locking clips were pretty low profile when they first came in. They're made to go across a flat um, piece of steel or metal with a hole, you know, and uh, because this deck lid was punched at a factory, it actually ends up needing something about that thick to go around so that the screws could go through. So I uh, took some uh, modifying with some needle nose pliers, nothing, you know, uh, too extravagant. So just know that, you know, what you get out of the box is not necessarily going to fit perfectly. Even though it is a 6x9, it calls for a 6x9 opening. There were 6x9 speakers that came out of here. It's not going to, you know, if you get an aftermarket 6x9 speaker, it's not necessarily going to fit perfectly. Sometimes it will. If it does, you know, good for you. Uh, you've got better luck than I do. But uh, it's again, uh, if you guys like the video, feel free to hit like, subscribe to the channel, be uh, putting up some more. Uh, videos related to the Sentra, to a 2005 uh, Explorer Sport Trek, and of course to uh, Old Faithful, a uh, 2008 6.4 liter uh, Ford F-250 diesel. Thanks a lot.